Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome to my E92 M3. Yes, you read that right, as the title suggested, I have bought the cheapest M3 available in the UK or possibly Europe. Um, I paid less than £13,000 for this car. Now, uh, scouring the interwebs, um, the next cheapest car I could find was £2,000 more than this. And that car had a Cat N uh, recorded against it, which this car does not. So, um, why so cheap? You are probably asking. Well, that's exactly what we're going to look at and uh, discuss in this video. Thanks for stopping by. As you can see, this uh, this M3 is an E92 model. This is the coupe um, of the E90 series uh, series models, and it's finished in this beautiful Horef black um, paintwork. This is a 2007 car, and this car has 165,000 miles recorded uh, on it. Um, hence the reason for the uh, for the low price. Um, obviously, there are cars out there that are 20,000 pounds and you know they they, they have 90,000 miles on it but at the end of the day this is a car that's supposed to be driven why would you buy one and just leave it sitting on your uh, you know on your driveway so yeah um 165,000 miles um some people may balk at that however there are there are some factors that i want to bring into play which we will discuss very very shortly about that mileage and about why it doesn't bother me um obviously with the uh with the e92 the slick top comes with this really really nice carbon fiber roof um which uh, obviously the sunroof models and the the, uh, the saloons didn't have um as you can see down the uh, down the down the body there's no real there's no real things or anything um you know you know to to remark upon um on the i think on the other side there's a tiny little thing which could probably get removed really really cheaply and um, if we come around the back we've got um obviously the this this lovely view of four uh, stainless steel t uh, you know tailpipes um, the all-important m3 badge um, things like the BMW badge here as you can see there's a little bit of a little bit of marking in the badge itself but again that's a really really simple fix um, if we look inside the uh, the inside of the trunk is absolutely immaculate you know this uh, this car has been looked after we've got the releases we can actually drop the uh, the rear seats which is a nice feature on the coupe which um all all coupes in my experience that i've come across tend to have which is also you know really really nice um i've even got some spare oil which the previous owner gave me some uh castrol edge 1060 which is the the correct oil for this car and um, that's nice to have and i've also got another set of brake pads right there um, again thrown in by the previous owner uh, drop the lid down and then moving around Again, nice and tidy on this side. No marks really to uh, to discuss apart from just there. There's a little tiny ding. I'm not sure if he's even going to show up on the camera. A little tiny ding just there. But other than that, you you, you, you there's no, you know there's nothing really worth uh, worth discussing. This mirror, for some reason, and I'm not sure why, doesn't quite sit um, as it should. That should obviously line up with that i don't know why it's like that um it doesn't seem to move um maybe something i can look at i don't know why it's like that um not overly concerned about it and coming down all four wheels um no curbing really to uh, to speak of however there is a little bit well there is actually there's a little bit of curb in there uh, and a little bit of corrosion is set in but you know that's nothing too drastic and easily easily rectified with um a light refurbishment all four tires Continentals, all really, really good tread. Um, the cars, you know, been treated well. It's had um, premium, premium brand tyres fitted, not um, not your uh, your ditch finders, as um, some cheaper people may decide to fit. Okay, so um, coming around the front, 
We've got that all important power bulge on the bonnet. And the front bumper is probably where the most um, cosmetic um, rectifications are required. We've got this crazing in the paint. Um, I'm led to believe that this is a fairly common thing on these M3s because, because the bumpers are plastic and they're fairly flexible, as you can see. Um, it, it does, you know, it does occur. We've got a bit down here, a little bit here, and a little bit just over here as well. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's the the body, and it's all in fairly fairly decent shape. I'm not overly concerned about it. A little bit of light resto on the bumper and the wheels, and you know, it, it'd be back to mint again. There's a few there's a few little stone chips on the bonnet, but again, um, easily fixed. Okay, so let's uh, let's have a look inside the car uh, at the interior. Okay, the interior of this car, um, it, belies its, uh, it belies its age. Now, if you look at this, this is absolutely pristine with the notable exce uh, exception of the driver's bolster, which to be perfectly honest, I've seen lower mileage cars with worse damage than that. Um, it's actually not that bad at all. We've got electric seats, heated, the heated switch buttons are on the center console just below the stereo. Um, and that all works fine. Everything in this car works absolutely perfectly. Um, over here, we've got the we've got the grabbers for the seat belts, which bring the seat belt forward because it's quite a long way to reach. They all work absolutely fine. Um, and yeah, the steering wheel is in fairly decent fettle. Uh, and again, for a 165,000 mile car, the interior is in very very good order. This car has been pampered during its life. Okay, one thing I do want to talk about um, with regards to its, uh, its 165,000 miles and the reason why I'm not concerned about that mileage is because I want to talk about its history. Okay, if I grab the, the service wallet that comes with every car, pull out the service book and we flip to the service history, we could see, look at this, look at this. all the way up to 157,000 miles. So only 8,000 miles ago, this car has a complete BMW service history. It's never been to an Indy. It's been to a BMW dealer for every service that this car has ever received. And that is absolutely astonishing. You know what I mean? Um, 165,000 miles and it's got a full BMW service history. On top of that, if we put that back in there, wallet, on top of that, I have a box full of history for this car. Now this is what I'm talking about. Look at that. Every receipt for everything, every invoice that this car ever had is in this, in the, you know, it's in this, um, in this box. We've got receipts for suspension arms, um, ignition coils, um, silencers, air filters, bulbs, every every tiny little thing that this car ever had is, is in this box. I've got receipts here for um, throttle uh, actuators, which if you know anything about E90 uh, Series M3s, you'll know that they are a, um, an issue with this car. It's had two. Um, it had one replaced at 90, uh, I think it was 98,000 miles, and then the next one uh, failed only 7,000 miles later and was replaced at 105,000 miles. Now, being on 165,000 miles, that is something I will likely have to do um, in, the, in the not too distant future, is replace both of those. Um, but there are companies out there that will do a rebuild and offer a lifetime warranty uh, on those parts. So that's probably an avenue that will go down. Something else I do want to talk about is the, uh, the infamous um, connecting rod bearings. The, uh, the rod bearings on these cars, the, the tolerances between the bearings and the crank are very, very small. And unless the, unless the car is um, up to temperature prior to you know, being used in the, the, to the intent that it was designed, um, they can be damaged. Uh, uh, increased wear in the rod bearings, uh, which can ultimately lead to catastrophic engine failure. However, the rod bearings on this car have been changed. Um, they've been changed by a local independent that I actually know personally. Um, so I'm content that they're all good. Um, the, the car 
certainly by the previous owner was was pampered it was never taken above 3000 rpm um, until it was completely up to temperature so he certainly looked after it from that regard okay um what i'll do now i'll um i'll i will start the car up um so you can hear the absolutely gorgeous engine that um this car comes with um <laughs> As you can hear, that that engine is absolutely something else. Um, obviously, it's a normally aspirated V8, um, and interestingly enough, the uh, the last normally aspirated M3 engine um, to be uh, to be produced. Um, additionally, however, it was the only M3 to be equipped with a V8, with previous models being a inline six and the model. Uh, three models before that, the original M3 being a inline four. Um, following on from this car, the uh, the later models were straight six, but they uh, they had a turbocharger. So yeah, uh, the only V8 model and the uh, the last of the normally aspirated ones. Okay, I think what we'll do now, we'll uh, pop the bonnet and have a look underneath. Okay, so here is the heart of the M3, and this is what makes this car so special. As you can see, you're greeted by this enormous. Uh, intake plenum when you uh, when you lift the bonnet um, and this absolutely ginormous um, uh, air box um, which is fed from both this intake here um, where you would on uh, other models find a fog light and also through here um, the uh, the engine itself makes 414 brake horsepower at 8300 rpm and 295 foot pounds of torque at 3,900 RPM. So it's a bit of a beast. This particular car is equipped with EDC. Um, and additionally, with the car, in, as part of the purchase, I got a pair of spare EDC shock absorbers. They're not brand new. They are secondhand, but they came from a low mileage uh, car, I'm led to believe, and they're perfectly serviceable. So I also have them. Um, yeah, as you can see, the, uh, the, the underside of the bonnet is nice and clean and yeah it's, it's everything's where it should be and it all looks good she sounds absolutely beautiful uh, as i said she has been treated very very well indeed okay as i said uh, a moment ago um i did get a pair of um uh, edc shocks included in the sale of the car additionally i got a couple of suspension components brand new suspension arms uh, trw ones um, so they are oe spec um, and I also got a pair of 260M uh, wheels, front ones, um, uh, included with the car, which have wet tyres on because the previous owner took this car to the track. Obviously, it's a, you know, it's a track weapon um, and that's what the car is designed for. Um, and he used to fit those if, uh, if the tracks were, well, track was a bit damp uh, and it would give him a little bit of extra grip at the front. Um, what I am on the hunt for is a pair of rear 260Ms um, and they're quite proven quite hard to find. Um, uh, they are a staggered setup and I would like to get another pair for the back because um, they're a very very attractive wheel and it'd be nice to have them and possibly keep these ones that are on the car now as a winter set and put the 260Ms on um, during the summer. Um, so yeah I'm, I'm keeping an eye out for them. I have found a set of brand new ones um, which are you know factory fresh they haven't got tyres they're absolutely brand spanking new and they're in the region of around about £1,200 which is a little bit steep considering especially when you consider I don't actually need the full set I only need uh, the rears. Um, yeah that is uh, that's the uh, the spares that were included. Um, one thing I will talk about is the C, uh, the uh, the iDrive is uh, the old um, CCC unit uh, in this car being a pre-LCI uh, and it, you know it doesn't have things like Bluetooth audio capability and stuff like that and that's maybe may something that I can look at in the future. There are a few options from various manufacturers that can offer CarPlay uh, you know and all that kind of stuff but at the moment the um, you know it all works perfectly the sat nav works um, yeah uh, the you know the the iDrive knob uh, it's all it's all working absolutely 100% there's no faults at all with that. But uh, yeah, that'll be uh, that'll be something I can look at in the future and probably do a video on. Anyway, guys, that is the rundown on my uh, my latest purchase. Um, hopefully, you uh, you like the car. I certainly do. I'm absolutely in love with this car. It's beautiful. Um, there'll be plenty of 
you know videos uh, coming up with this video there's no doubt going to be some maintenance videos that i need to do um and there'll be i have no doubt there'll be some kind of faults of some kind that need rectification in the future and we'll you know we'll cover all of them on this channel uh, in amongst all the other things that we uh, we do here okay guys thank you very much for stopping by i hope you enjoyed the video if you did leave a like don't forget to drop a comment in below and uh, i'll see you all again for the next video thank you very very much for stopping by and i'll see you all again soon take care bye bye now